Hello all! Welcome back to the Knowledge Tower, where we scrutinise the science of the Bionicle legend. Today's investigation, the Kanoe Kakama, the Great Mask of Speed. Worn most famously by the Toamata of Stone, Pohatu, this mask grants its wearer the ability to move at incredible speeds, and to resist the rigours upon their body that those speeds would cause. But just how fast can a Kakama wearer move? And just how much stress would that speed put upon their body? Let's find out. In order to work out the speed of any moving object, you must first know two things. One, the distance the object travelled, and two, the time it took the object to travel that distance. By dividing the distance by time, you get the object's average speed, as shown by this equation. So, we need to find an instance in the Bionicle legend that shows a mask of speed in use and gives us an indication of both of those parameters. In the first Bionicle Chronicles book, Tale of the Toa, Pohatu uses his Kakama to travel from Pokoro in Powahi to Mount Ihu in Kowahi in under a minute. This scene gives us a start point, an end point, and a rough time frame, and, as far as I could find, it is the only time in the Barnacle legend where the use of a Kakama is described with such details. While this does not provide the exact figures that we need, it's a start, and we can work forward from it. The official labelled map of the island of Matanui shows us exactly where on the island both Pokoro and Mount Ihu are situated, and, most importantly, the map shows us the scale of the island. Now we're getting somewhere. The map puts the island's length at approximately 357 kayo. A kayo is an in-universe measurement that is equal to approximately 1.37 kilometres, meaning that the island of Matanui is around 489.09 kilometres long. By counting the number of pixels from the very northernmost tip of the island all the way down to its southernmost shore, and then dividing 489 kilometres by this number, I was able to find the resolution of this map is 330 metres per pixel, meaning only features 330 metres or larger are represented on it. More importantly, it meant that by counting the pixels of the route of Pohatu's journey, I could find the distance he travelled. Easy, right? Well, not so fast. Unfortunately, at this map scale, it is impossible to tell the exact route that Pohatu would have taken, and therefore it is not possible to take into account any twists and turns he may have taken along the way, or any change in elevation as he went up and down the mountains of Kowahi on his way to his final stop at Mount Ihu. However, by simply measuring the straight-line distance between Pokoro and Mount Ihu, I could instead find the absolute minimum distance of Pohatu's journey. I also put the time value for the journey at exactly 60 seconds, in order to get a more definitive number than the under a minute that the journey was described to take. This means that this investigation is no longer trying to find the exact speed Pohatu was travelling at during his run, but instead the absolute bare minimum speed he could have been travelling at, as any shortening of the time frame or any additional distance added would only increase the final speed measurement. The distance between Pokoro and Mount Ihu worked out to be 386 pixels, or roughly 127,380 metres when converted to scale. Taking the speed equation from earlier, we simply divide the distance by the time, and there it is. 2,123 metres per second. Okay, I need you all to understand how absolutely insane this speed is. When an aircraft is moving at the speed of sound, it is travelling at around 340 metres per second, also known as Mach 1. On this journey, Pohatu was travelling at over Mach 6. Pohatu doesn't just go supersonic when he activates his mask. Mach 6 is hypersonic. He could run around the entire circumference of the Earth in only six hours. And remember, this is the absolute bare minimum speed Pohatu would have been travelling at, meaning the actual speed of the Kakama is even faster than this, 
probably by a significant margin once all of the twists and turns of his true route are taken into account. It is very lucky for our favourite Toe of Stone that as well as giving him this ludicrous speed, the Kakama also allows him to survive the forces that velocity would subject him to. As Pohatu runs, some of the air in front of him would be forced up to match his insane velocity, with that massive change in kinetic energy being transferred to the air molecules in the form of heat, raising the temperature of a thin layer of air around his body, with that temperature increase being proportional to the square of his velocity. At Mach 6, the air in that thin layer around him would reach nearly 1,400 degrees Celsius. That is around the melting point of stainless steel. While his mask is active, Pohatu could easily give Tahu a run for his money in terms of resistance to heat. This investigation started with the question of how fast the Kakama was. Turns out, it is fast. 